Now news political reporter Marshall Zollinger is explaining the process now that Biden is out. Let's go over some DNC scenarios. 1976, that's the year the Centennial State became Centennial. 1976 is also the number of delegates needed to become the Democratic nominee for president. Had President Biden gone to the DNC next month in Chicago, he had about 3,900 delegates ready to vote for him to make him the nominee, including the 72 from the squarish state of Colorado. But it's important to recognize that every single delegate in Colorado is pledged to vote for the president. In the March presidential primary, Biden earned enough support for all of Colorado's delegates to go to the DNC and vote for Biden. Colorado Democratic Party Chair Shad Murib explains we are not unique. Yeah, so every delegate in the country is pledged. This is a reform that was created after 1968's contested convention. And so this is not a new rule. Every delegate that has been sent to Chicago from Colorado or Minnesota or California or wherever is committed to vote for the president. Okay, so what now, since Biden has dropped out before the convention? Anyone who wants to be nominated has to get 300 signatures to be nominated. You know, John Hancock's, no more than 50 from any one state. Certainly, if it was an open convention situation, you'd have many candidates wrestling to get those signatures to be placed into nomination. No doubt Vice President Kamala Harris would be nominated, though others could as well. And Colorado's delegates would not automatically be committed to Harris. Our delegates would, of course, look to his guidance and his support for any other candidate should he choose to provide it, especially Vice President Harris, and weigh that decision pretty seriously. In other words, it would be a free-for-all until someone gets 1,976 votes. Of course, it'd be great to speak with one voice, but every delegate is, of course, uh, their own person with their own concerns for this country.